Hey guys, and welcome back to Laws of Physio. Today, we're gonna to go through a case study of a gentleman that presented to the practice after an ankle sprain. Young man, 28 years old, was a basketball player. And during one of his games, he landed incorrectly on his ankle in an inverted position. And this resulted in him rolling his ankle. He later presented to the practice and this is what followed so from the mechanism of injury we know there was an inversion so he had rolled his foot inwards and this would have led us to assume that he had strained one of the ligaments on the outside of his ankle there are three major ligaments on the outside there is your atfl your anterior talofibular ligament your CFL, your calcaneal fibula ligament, and your PTFL, your posterior talofibular fibula ligament. Uh, these three ligaments make on the outside. So the role of your ligament is to prevent unwanted movements. These are usually unnatural movements that you can't do by yourself, which requires a physio or another healthcare professional to manually do this for you. So we tested the ATFL and what we do when we do these tests is we feel if there is any symptoms being triggered by putting the person into this position. We also feel for an end feel, which is if there is any kind of natural body movement that stops us from doing that. This could be a hard clunk, which usually means there is uh, some sort of bone involved. It could be a soft rebound, which means the ligament is still intact, or that could be a lack of end feel, which usually means the structure has been completely torn. Luckily for this gentleman, when we tested his ATFL, there was a little bit of a rebound effect, so we didn't suspect a grade three. When we tested his CFL and his PTFL, it was intact and there wasn't any pain involved. So from these tests, we'll be able to figure out that it was a grade two tear to his ATFL. We diagnose ankle sprains or ligament sprains from grade one to grade three. So grade one means it's a slight overstretch of the structures of that ligament. Grade two means there is, it's a moderate stretch, which has resulted in some sort of tearing of that ligament. And a grade three is a, usually a complete tear of the ligament. And due to the nature of the position of the ATFL, it can result in an avulsion fracture, which means that the ligament has pulled some of the bone off. Each grade has a different recovery time. The treatment is relatively the same. In terms of a grade one, it can take between three to six weeks to return to sport. A grade two can take anywhere between six to eight weeks to return to sport. And a grade three can take anywhere between three to four months to return to sport. Keep in mind these are rough outlines. It isn't exact for each person. It depends on how well the person recovers, but these are the general guidelines that we go for. In terms of how we treated this person, for a grade, for any grade, the first thing we want to do is to protect the ligament as much as we can. So to do that, we do certain techniques in order to alleviate stress from that ligament. So in this case, I used some strapping tape to hold his ankle in a position where it wouldn't be stressful. For severe grades where the person is unable to put a lot of pressure through the ankle, the guideline now is to get the person into a moon boot. That way you can still load up the foot and not put any stress through that ligament. The reason we do this protective taping or equipment is because we do want to load the ankle as soon as we can in order to facilitate blood flow and encourage recovery. So for this gentleman, we taped up his ankle and we got him moving as much as he can and by moving I mean walking and putting body weight through his foot and this would allow his body to slowly desensitize. 
In terms of specific treatments for this person, we did some needling because needling would help with that swelling. A little bit of soft tissue release just to encourage a bit of blood flow and to help facilitate recovery. But the most important thing at the end of the day was to protect and to slowly load as much as possible. So after the first session, the patient left with tape on his ankle and he was able to walk a lot better with a pain reduction of about 70%. I did catch up with the patient again in a week's time. With that tape, he only kept it on for about four days and that's what we recommend. Any longer, then you can start to starve the skin of oxygen and you can start to develop an allergic reaction or a rash. So he did go very well. He was able to return to work, walking as much as he could. And on the second session, there was still some residual swelling and there was still some lack of mobility. So on this session, we did work on, again, helping with some of the swelling. We continued the needling and the soft tissue work. And the goal was to get an improvement in mobility this time. So we do want to protect the ligament as much as possible. But when we protect, it's pros and cons. We're protecting the ligament that's injured, but we're also causing stiffness through the ankle. So our job was to find a nice balance where we could slowly, slowly loosen him up while protecting the ligament that wasn't intact. Second session he left, taped on his ankle, and this time we encouraged more exercise, so more walking. So we asked him to double his mobility and to begin some light weight bearing exercises, such as cycling at the gym and gentle isometric eversion exercises. So the reason I enjoy or I prescribe isometric work is because you can load up the tendons and you can load up the muscles, but you won't be changing the position of the joint. And this way you're not putting too much stress through the ligament that has been injured. On the third session, uh, the gentleman came back and he was walking very well, pretty much felt minimal pain, only pain when forcing his ankle into an inverted position, was back in the gym doing most exercises. So on the third session, we were working on encouraging more weight bearing, again, protecting the ankle and strengthening the muscles around that area. We steered clear of the needles and we worked on some electrical stimulation to get some of the muscles switched on. We worked again on soft tissue release and a little bit of stretching just to get the ankle nice and loose. And this time we worked on his balance. So anytime you stress a ligament, you lose what we call proprioception, which is your body's awareness of where it is. When you injure a ligament, you do stretch some of the nerve endings in that ligament, and this results in your body kind of losing its coordination with that area. So the sooner we could get him putting more body weight onto that area, the sooner he would recover. So the exercise prescription for the third session was a lot of balance work. So we got the gentleman initially starting in a tandem stance and then progressing to a single leg stance and working on balancing on his ankle with minimal pain. So the main focus throughout the recovery was a little bit of discomfort, but not pain. You should never really feel pain when you perform any of these exercises. This time he was feeling a lot better. So we again, we did tape it to protect it, but we didn't tape as intensely as the first few sessions, only one or two prote protective strips as a insurance in case he did anything silly. On the fourth session, he was walking in pretty much pain-free. The only complaint was a little bit of stiffness in his ankle and a little bit of minor pain when he would go into an inversion position. This time the focus was on being able to get the ankle to accept force and to produce force. So what we did again, a little bit of electrical stim just to get the muscles moving and the muscles kind of warmed up. 
Again, working on balance, but this time we made it a little bit harder. We changed the surface to be a little bit more uneven, just to challenge the nervous system and the ankle itself a little bit more. And we started a little bit of power production. So in this case, some calf raises, some toe raises, and a little bit of dropping is the best way to describe it. So this involves a mini kind of jump with both legs and accepting the force at the end. So the role of these exercises was to be able to train the ankle to absorb force and in that way it would be able to handle going back to basketball later in the future. We sent the gentleman off for a week to continue his training, this time focusing on producing a little bit more power through the ankle and to be able to absorb the force a bit more. And on the fifth session, again, patient walked in pain-free, uh, no swelling anymore, this time no changes in range of motion between the ankles. He was pretty keen to get back into sport, so that's what we did. We slowly got him back training with sport-specific exercises. So because of basketball, there is a lot of pivoting involved, there is a lot of jumping involved, and there is a lot of sprinting involved. So at this stage, our focus was to slowly get him back into these kind of roles. So now we could get him training in a little bit of jogging and progressing into running. For now, mostly in a straight line, just to protect his ankle from any kind of pivoting. We did incorporate a little bit of side stepping. So starting off walking and just kind of learning and teaching the body to be able to accept force and then quickly shift in an opposite position or opposite direction. And this way he was able to slowly get used to pivoting again. And finally, we got getting him used to producing power again. So this time we would add on some explosive calf raises. And in this way, it would teach him how to produce power and again, absorbing the force at the end. So with the main role of these exercises is to start being a bit more sports specific and slowly working up to where he was performing before. In terms of where he was compared to pre-injury, he was performing at probably 30% at this point. On the sixth session, he came in presenting with no pain um, and his main role or his main goal was to get back into sport full time. At this point in time, he had been able to work up his range of motion to pretty much full. His balance was pretty even between the two ankles. It was only uncomfortable when he started to perform for his sport again. We call this fear avoidance behavior and it's very common. Your body will naturally not want to do certain movements in case you re-injure yourself. And what we've learned over time is the sooner you start training your brain that this is a normal movement, the sooner you get back into sport and activity. So at this point in time, we kept the exercises the same, working on power, working on balance and working on absorbing force, but we took it up to the next level. So previously he was only performing at 30%. This time we got him performing at about 60%. Instead of running in straight lines, we gave him the okay to start stepping and running in different directions. In terms of jumping, he was able to progress into single leg leaps and single leg jumps. And in terms of balance, he was able to perform on an unstable surface with his eyes closed with no issues at all. On the seventh and last session, he was doing pretty much everything that he used to do before. Our goal at Physio is to get you not only to where you were before, but to enhance your life so you can perform at your peak. So even though he was symptomatic, asymptomatic, sorry, and he was performing where he was before, we would have prescribed exercises to prevent this injury from coming back and to enhance his game. So this time we prescribed him a gym-based program, bringing in a lot of compound movements, including squats and jumping and some deadlifting. And this would help to train his body to be able to handle different forces 
and be more resilient and this way he was able to jump higher and run longer and go faster. So overall, this patient took about seven sessions to improve. The main goal at the very beginning is to protect the ligament and we do that through taping or through a moon boot, as well as managing swelling and symptoms through needling or ice or massage and compression. Towards the middle of treatment, our goal is to load appropriately and this is also rev relevant throughout the whole progression of his recovery program. The more you can load through discomfort, the better. But if it does progress into pain, that is too much and that's when you can cause a risk of re-injury. So always remember discomfort, not pain. Towards the end of his recovery program, he was working on performance enhancing. So this would involve practicing sports specific movements like pivoting, stepping and jumping. And we would slowly load and get him to the point where he would outperform where he used to be. To recap, if you, tear, if you sprain your ankle, protect initially, manage the swelling, load appropriately as soon as you can, and then the goal is to progress through discomfort until you're able to not only get to pre-injury but beyond and enhance your performance. So let me know if you like videos like this. Uh, if you found this helpful, please give it a like and share with someone who might need this video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment or if there's any kind of diagnosis or pathology that you want me to talk about, please let me know. Until next time, take care.